What's up guys, we're back with a brand new video. In today's video, we're going to be doing another video about the uh, Amy community series that happened on the weekend. I already made a video, a bit of a recap, so go check out the last video if you want all my thoughts on every single match. Uh, but today I'll be going through um, for me to match of the players that really surprised me and I'm a bit excited about um, going to this season and players to watch almost going into this season because these players all played amazing in the preseason and are in perfect form to go into the season with. Uh, so I'll be going over that in today's video. Make sure to drop a like on this video, subscribe, we're on the road to 600 subscribers uh, which if we can do that soon that'll be absolutely amazing. We just hit 500 which was absolutely amazing so thank you guys all very very much. Uh, so without further ado, let's get straight into the video. First up for Adelaide, I've gone for young Lockie Scholl. Uh, I feel like that I really liked him in his back half of last year. I feel like he showed some very, very good signs. And in this game, he was probably one of the only bright lights because, let's be honest, Adelaide played absolutely horrible in this pracky match. And was probably one of their only shining lights, getting 18 touches in this game while also scoring a goal. Coming off the halfback, playing a little bit on the wing. Um, I don't know if he played into the guts, to be honest, uh, but he looked very, very good and a player to look forward to if you're an Adelaide fan. Next up for Brisbane, I've gone for their new recruit, Joey Danaher. Uh, now, there, was, there could have been probably better players in this match, but I'm just going off the potential now that after I see Joe Danaher kick three goals in a pracky match, after he kicked four the week before, I feel like this is the year... We finally see Joe Danaher go back to his 2017 form. And after seeing some of his performances in the preseason and how he's moving, um, he doesn't look like he's carrying any injuries like he did last year at Essendon. Uh, so I honestly reckon he could be around the mark for a Coleman medal. Next up for Carlton, I've gone with Jack Silvani. Now, Harry Mackay went down with an injury uh, at the start of the second quarter. And they pretty much just took... the like, like they said, Jack Savani, go forward, um, be the key forward, number one man. And he absolutely had an absolute cracker, getting 17 touches and three goals to go along with it. Taking a huge contested mark, uh, which was a really good sign from him. And um, the sign that he could be uh, the missing link in that forward line, because let's be honest, the, probably the biggest weakness to Carlton is their scoring power. And if they can get Jack Savani putting up these type of numbers um, on a consistent basis... Look out for Carlton's forward line. Next up for Collingwood, I've gone for Jordan Ngoi. Now, Jordan Ngoi, with the, the absence of Adam Trelaw now out of the team, they've actually played him a lot of midfield time, and it seems to be working beautifully. Jordan Ngoi ended up finishing the match with 27 disposals, kicking two goals, two, and an absolute cracker, and almost bringing him back into this match. And I feel like this is not out of the realm of what he can actually do on a daily, on like a, a weekly basis. Uh, 27 touches is not out of his realm, and he has the ability when he pushes forward to kick two plus goals a match, and almost play almost like a Dustin Martin type role. Next up for Essendon, I've gone with Zach Merritt. Now Zach Merritt had a very very good game, a damaging game, and pretty much led Joel, like Essendon to almost beat Geelong in a practice match. Um, now, it was only a practice match, but the way he was moving, the way he was ability to get the contested ball, while getting on the outside with using his pace, his foot skills, grabbing 37 disposals, was a classy act from him. And if they can get this type of production out of him, watch out for Zach Merritt in 2021. Next up for Fremantle, the name that I was not expecting to see when I looked at this match, which was Ethan Hughes. Now, I'm pretty sure someone, when I made that Fremantle preview, said that this guy should be best 22. I don't really know much about him, but in, the, in this practice match, he ended up grabbing 31 disposals while also getting 13 marks, and I think like almost, like over half of them were actually intercept marks. So if he's playing at this level, watch out for this guy in 2021. He could be a sneaky breakout player for them in 2021 because their back line is already stacked as it is. Next up for Geelong is a, probably a person you would not be expecting with all their talent that they've got on their list, which is Jordan Clark, uh, probably one of the youngest people that played in this match uh, with a very aging Geelong team. And he ran, ended up grabbing 29 disposals, one goal with two behinds and 10 marks. 
the halfbacks and wings have taken over and this bloke has taken it on the chest uh, being able to break lines with his absolute brilliant pace uh, with his ability to still hit up foot skills I'm not sure what his disposal efficiency looked like in this match but I know he's a very good kick at the footy his ability to get around the ground and I expect this man to almost not miss a game in 2021 if he's playing at this type of level next up I have former top 10 pick Will Brody now Will Brody has shown so much potential to be almost like a Patrick Cripps type player in his early years of, of under to 18s level and even that's why they that's why I drafted him in the top 10 so far in his AFL career he's shown glimpses uh, but not really fully been at that level but this game he was absolutely dominating in the middle um, almost one Gold Coast this game actually he was actually in the first half like dominating Lockie Neal, Jared Lyons and Dane Zorko he just was just bursting out of packs with his ability to win the footy gathering 27 disposals also kicking one goal two in this match and really showed the potential to be almost like the, the partnership with him and Matthew Rao. Next up for GWS I've gone for a young fella that was pick 11 in the 2020 draft which was Tanner Brunnen um, and a person that I was not expecting to see break out as a rookie um, and show his potential already kicking four goals and these were no easy goals uh, you probably would have seen uh, that would have been on like Instagram and Facebook which would have been his 80 metre snap he literally got it at the corner of the square in the middle turns around and just snaps it for goal and I could not believe it actually went in uh, and he seems like a smoky for the rising star if he keeps on playing at this level as a small forward. Next up for Hawthorne is another young fella which is Jacob Kosinski. And up kicking six goals three. Nine shots on goal. Uh, when I turned on this match and they already said he had four goals. I'm like they must not be. They, they can't be right. Well I'll just say it was right. And he, he wasn't playing on no, nobody defender either. You're probably thinking they're versus North Melbourne. You know, he's probably playing on someone that probably isn't at the level of a AFL level quite yet. But he's playing on Aiden Core, the new recruit that was a vital part of that GWS backline and a great lockdown defender. And he just made him look like a, a rookie. He made him look stupid kicking to six goals. Next up is Melbourne, and I have Stephen May. Now, sadly, he did go down with a concussion in the last quarter, so I don't know how likely he is to play round one now with their new concussion rules, but he ended up finishing the match with 27 touches and not actually playing the last quarter, getting nine marks, and he was absolutely outbodying um, like Aaron Norton out the way, uh, Josh Bruce out the way, him and Jake Lever. I almost want to put both of them there because him and Jake Lever. This is the best match I've actually ever seen him play together. And even though it is a packy match, like, Western Bulldogs, you could see, wanted to win this game to get some confidence by the way that they were playing. Uh, the commentators were even saying that Luke Beveridge wanted to use this as a dress rehearsal for round one to see how their team can play at full pace. They didn't even want to use their 26-man lineup. They end up having because of um, that, an injury to, like, Aaron Norton. And Hayden Crozier also went down an injury. I, I think it was someone else. I just could not put my finger on it right now. So, yeah, Stephen May looked absolutely excellent. Next up is North Melbourne. And a, no, a guy I was expecting to see um, actually in this round one side because he's barely played since he got to his club, which is Dom Tyson, gathering 23 disposals and kicking three goals uh, playing on the wing. And, you know, he was a, I think he was a top five pick about five or six years ago when he first got drafted to GWS. Uh, made his way to Melbourne, showed glimpses of what they were expecting. Ended up getting traded for, I'm pretty sure, Braden Uh Has not, I don't think he's played a game yet for, for um, North. I could be wrong though. At least I have not seen him out there. But he absolutely showed his potential getting the, these 23 touches and kicking three goals, which I was not expecting to see from this man. Next up is Port Adelaide, and I've gone for Alira Lee. Now, Alira Lee got bring in to pretty much be their main key defender, because before this, I think their tallest defender was either Trent McKenzie or Tom Jonas, and they're only about 190. Uh, I'm not sure how tall Alira Lee is, but I'm pretty sure he's a bit of an above average for a, um, you know, a key defender. I think he's about 195, which is a very, very good height for a key defender, and he's showing his value already. 
getting 21 touches and getting 14 marks. I'm pretty sure about 10 of these were actually intercepts, which was really good to see from this man. Um, and he's really showing his role. And this is now this is making me think that Port Adelaide are going to another level after seeing Alir Alir, uh, how he played in this game, because he was just playing an absolute elite level and. He's almost, he almost just looking like he could be an all Australian fullback if he keeps up this type of form. He's only versing Adelaide. Adelaide did have a very, very poor game. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. Next up is Richmond, and I've gone with Jaden Shaw. No real surprises here. He gathered 43 possessions in this match to go along with 12 marks, and he was absolutely dominating, taking full advantage of the new rule that they bring into uh, the stand, with the sand and the mark rule. Um, and players like Jane Shaw, they got a benefit and have a huge years um, with this new rule. And he seems like he could be one of the best halfbacks. And always, if he keeps on playing this level, I reckon he could be an All Australian halfback this year. Next up is Jack Sinclair for St Kilda. Now, Jack Sinclair uh, was probably the biggest surprise for St Kilda in this match. Because he had showed, you know, a bit of science last year. Did not find himself in the St. Kilda side until probably midway through the year. And then showed his running capacity, but it wasn't too great. But this match, he was, no one could catch him. Um, his ability to run all day, even have a bit spurts in the midfield, like in the guts, which you don't usually see from Jack Sinclair. And gathering 28 disposals and kicking a goal. Uh, him and Brad Hill running around Marvel was absolutely excellent to watch. Next up is Sydney, and I've gone with the young fella, James Rowbottom. Now, it's really weird to pick who to go for, because it, it seemed like every like young midfielder for Sydney in this game played well, like Brian Cap Campbell or Chapel, or I don't know how to say his name. Sorry about that, guys. Um, he played really well, gathering about 16 or 18 disposals. Uh, but James Rowbottom gathering 17 touches and two goals. I almost put Luke Parker here. But what Luke Parker does, I don't expect it. I don't expect anything else from him these days. Even though we do play an excellent match, kicking three goals. Uh, but James Robot in giving 17 touches and two goals is a great sign. He showed signs last year, and if he keeps up this development, he could be one of the best midfielders in the competition. Next up for West Coast, I've gone for Tom Barras. Uh, now, really showed what he could do uh, last year when Jeremy McGovern was a bit out of form and he wasn't playing too well. Tom Jonas, uh, Tom Jonas, Tom Barras ended up finishing this match getting 18 touches and 12 marks. Uh, seemed to be intercepting everything and playing really, really well. I'm pretty sure he was the main defender on Matt Tabner most of the game and played really, really well. Matt Tabner didn't really do much in this game, uh, which really shows his defensive ability too. Next up is the Western Bulldogs, and I've gone for the Bont. Now, the Bont was... Training this like there was three votes on the line, getting 32 touches and kicking three goals. And now this there's been hype on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook ever since this match that the Bont is a favourite for the Brandlow now. I'm sorry, but that's just not how it works. Uh, especially when there's not Adam Trelaw in this team yet, and they still were missing a few midfielders. Uh, that made me think that you know when they come back that maybe Bont will not get this much midfield time. So thanks for watching guys, make sure to drop a like and a subscribe if you enjoy these videos, we're on the road to 600 subscribers.